I mean, if uh, between the two of you, who has an ear to the ground, I mean, to tell us exactly why the man's life would have been threatened, is it because uh, he's been just barely a that month was, in that charge? Was, yeah, that was the first, his first game in charge. Uh, they are, we qualify away against Malawi. They posted the creditable results when you consider the fact that they lost to Malawi at home in the previous round. Now they drew nil-nil with Malawi away. Um, Roger Palmgren is an experienced coach on the African continent. He has coached in different countries, exactly. uh, South Africa, Ethiopia, Syria, Sierra Leone, held positions both at national and club level. So I'm thinking this is someone who understands the terrain. Maybe he's seen the writing on the wall or received some subtle threats that maybe he, with past experience he's learned to take particularly seriously. Um, we don't know the nature of the, tre- of, of the threats. The FA was not informed. The police in Namibia was not informed. Uh, they just have to take his word for the fact that he was threatened. It is word against uh, whoever was was threatening him. So it's 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 a terrible situation for the for the Namibians. Not the end of the world. They have appointed uh, Ricardo Manetti and Ronnie Kalalelo. Ronnie Kalalelo was a former international. He also played for yeah. He also I think he was also um, uh, in the squad that played at the 1998 uh, tournament yeah. Africa Cup of Nations in Burkina Faso. So they they have asked him to step in, in the, on an interim basis. But when you consider the fact that with 48 hours against the African champions, a team that is has been unbeaten in, uh, unbeaten in the 19 games. This is yeah. the last thing you want to have. You don't need this at all. At all. This is the last thing, the piece of news you want going into that game. It will dampen morale. I mean, you are going into a battle without your general. Going into battle without your general. Well, of course, uh, the Super Eagles are very much intact, and I'm sure they would be at home now, coming from a high of uh, getting that win in Kenya. It was no mean feat defeating uh, the Harambe Stars in their own backyard. A very strong Harambe side. Uh... In their own bedroom, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've just coined a phrase. Mm. Well, of course, uh, like uh, Tunde said, in their own bedroom, a very formidable side for that, uh, for that matter. And actually, many people would have hedged their bets against the Super Eagles actually getting that kind of result. But of course, it was the result many Nigerians hoped for. And even if it was half a goal against none, at least uh, the yeah, three points know. were in the bag. Well, it wasn't just uh, Nigeria alone. Those are the other World Cup uh, qualifier uh, results we have uh, there. All right, Morocco defeated Tanzania at 2-1. Uh, Zambia had a phony victory over Lesotho. Congo and uh, Gabon played, played out a goalless draw. Congo is surprisingly leading that group. All right, and um, Libya and Congo uh, Democratic Republic played out uh, a goalless draw as well. Sudan and, uh, and Ghana, it was... Um, Sudan actually lost at home to Ghana by, yeah, they lost, yeah. by one goal. So Ghana one goal played with ten, 10 men. No, yeah, yes, Ghana played with 10 men. Uh, another result, Botswana also lost at home to Ethiopia. Ethiopia are leading a group that includes uh, the Central African Republic and South Africa. Ethiopia are one of the form teams on the continent as well. Uh, the Central African Republic lost at home to the Bafana Bafana uh, of South Africa. Uh, Katlego Minshego gets one of the goals there as well. Sierra Leone forced visiting Tunisia to a 2 2 draw. The uh, Blue Sharks of Cape Verde defeated the Nzalang National of Equatorial Guinea 2 1. And uh, the last result there, Côte d'Ivoire uh, hammering the, the Scorpions of uh, Gambia by three goals to nothing. Uh, Wilfred Boni and Yaya Turi also on the score sheet. What do you expect? Well. Uh, uh, the elephant would always smash the Scorpions. Other results, uh, Jonathan Pretopra scored an 81st minute goal as uh, Burkina Faso won one nil away and again a West African derby. Zimbabwe lost by four goals to two at home to Egypt. The Egyptians are absolutely unhappy with that, yeah. with that game. Uh, we'll talk about that later on. Guinea murdered the Mozambique and by six goals to one. Uh, other results have Benin also lost at home to Algeria yeah. and Rwanda and Mali played out a one-all draw. Another interesting result, uh, maybe we might get to see that is uh, uh, Togo defeating the the, formerly the, the, form formerly, formerly indomitable. People say, people say they are pussycats now. Uh, Atakora Lalawale, one of the goal scorers as well. You might not remember him, but he was the outstanding player in that uh, Wafu Cup final. Yeah. Uh, played in Ijebo Day many um, few years ago uh, between Nigeria and Togo. That Nigeria surprisingly lost to Togo. He was also one of the goal scorers as well. And Komlan Amewu, 
was also the second goal scorer. Well, uh, the indomitable Lions proving uh, very, very domitable <laughs> now. <laughs> these days, these days, last three years. They've been and Togo actually appears to be their bogey team even when they were actually at their best. Yes, at the height of their powers, Togo always all kinds, all had kinds, their, had number, all, all their kinds of problems. Uh, but I'm not surprised. Uh, and this was the Togo that was bereft of Emmanuel Adebayo. Yeah, they've had their problems in terms of personnel, uh, infighting. The Cameroon, if, in fact, uh, the Cameroon FA, the, elections, the, 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 the FA president has been arrested. You know, they have all kinds of all kinds of problems, and it's affecting the. Football. Well, let's talk about uh, Egypt versus uh, uh, Zimbabwe. The Egyptians with an away win and still very unhappy about it. Okay. I mean, excuse me. Well, uh, the so pundits or, or people who should know better in Egyptian football were claiming that um, the Egyptians didn't play to their true potential. That uh, the okay, coach, so coach Marco expected. Bradley changed the formation the day before the match, playing three at the back as against four. Uh, he left the defense uncoordinated. That the, playing against a better team, they should have suffered a heavy defeat. Uh, that there was not be, there was not a, not, uh, a proper cutting edge. It just uh, I, I think they well, had the luxury of being able to say this oh, because what, they won. What, what, what that tells me, what that tells me is that that's a team with a lot of ambition because they're not satisfied with just going away with a victory and three points. I mean, should any of African it? champions should have ambition. Yeah, apart from that, they didn't qualify for the last for edition. The, for, for any of the last... The last, edition, the last time they were at the World Cup an, was, a, an away win for goodness sake is actually very satisfactory. Yeah, I, I even, very satisfactory yes, the last time they were in the World Cup was, was 1990. The, the last edition of the Nations Cup, they, they were not there as well. So, I mean, you, you would understand why the fans are a bit worried. I mean, now I think the Egyptians have a good side. I think they have an opportunity of getting in, in, into the World Cup. And they are already seeing themselves topping that group. But they are imagining what will happen if they play a stronger side. And that explains why uh, most of the pundits are like, look, Coach Bob, you need, you need to watch this. Well, it's actually very funny. But then their North African uh, neighbors, the Libyans, also are probably allowing their own political problems to affect uh, football in their country. The World Cup qualifier versus the Togolese was to have been played in Benghazi, and now it has to be shifted to Tripoli, the capital. Well, sometimes I wonder why the choice of uh, Benghazi over <laughs> in, Tripoli in the, anyway. In the, security reasons actually uh, a lot of deaths uh, in, in the city. Uh, over 30 people have died. So, I mean, football cannot be played. The following under, clashes between protesters and their pro-government militia. You know, football cannot be played under that situation. Absolutely. You know, security cannot be guaranteed. I mean, what happens if... Uh, people not from your country come and play for and start, start killing them. You know, I so, expect uh, a Togolese team that suffered uh, such a horrific uh, yeah, accident um, three years ago. Three years ago, trust me, they will not nothing, in their memory. nothing, nothing like that to uh, repeat itself again. Unfortunately, well then uh, the Togolese playing safe there, and the Libyan authorities acknowledging the fact that yes, uh, you have to move to where you can guarantee. Uh, security to a team that is very sensitive to security challenges there. But of course, uh, that has been taken care of. But then, uh, who can fight against water? I'm talking about uh, the flood waters in uh, Germany. Well, the Flying Eagles have, to have had to grow wings and fly out of Germany and uh, nest over there in a neighboring uh, Austria. Well, the, uh, the flood waters driving the Flying Eagles out of uh, Germany and maybe throwing the spanner in the works uh, ahead of the preparations for the under-21 uh, World Cup in Turkey? Well, I, I'll just have to take the words of the coach, uh, if, if it's worth anything. Uh, he said he's going to restructure the team. He, he says, well, I didn't use my best players at the Toulon Invitational Tournament. I mean, this team is still a work in progress. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can take his word for it. But, but, but I guess we'll just have to cling to that hope that, you know, the Nigerian spirit will, will come into play. Uh, when you least expect a Nigerian team, Although that's pushing our luck too far, but when you least expect an agency to do well, that's when they just come at you, they surprise you. And, um, and between now and June 17, when, when, when the competition starts, I don't know if there's any miracle, but he says he's going to restructure the team, he's going to reconfigure a lot of things. I don't know. I don't know what can be done, but this flood surely doesn't help matters. Well, then uh, we'll be expecting to hear from the super, excuse me, the Flying Eagles coach what his uh, strategy will be as far as uh, the restructuring of the team is concerned. For now, we'll take a break, and when we return, it's club football on the domestic scene. We'll be right back.
himself, Matthew Etim, he's shown uh, some real good touches for Rangers. That's a very good find by O.K. Mwadi. Yeah, for the former Academy Warriors player. Adamu loses possession of the ball but gets uh, 